So far, so good. Uh, we have been able to uh, get you know the basic stuff working in our website, and we have something like login working, and we have a few components uh, in the play. Uh, I think this is the point uh, at which we should start looking at creating some uh, tests because tests are very important and unless you have some tests set up properly then uh, going forward as the project will turn more and more complex then you might be adding certain features in certain place in your uh, project which will be breaking certain other features and it will be very hard to track that every change that we are making whether uh, you know it uh, is uh, not breaking any previously existing functionality or not okay so uh what we'll do is uh, we'll just take a look at the current state of the code right now and it contains a tests folder already uh, okay uh, so this is because uh when we created the project uh using the view cli command as you know in the beginning i did use um, a testing setup so we were using uh you know I think uh, we're using jest for the unit test so there is a just test written which is it uh, fetches the hello world component and it checks that if the message is new message or not uh, of course these tests are the generic tests that are designed by view cli in the beginning and these are suited for the uh, default uh, components that are generated which we do not exist in my project anymore i've already deleted these so these tests will of course not run and there's an end-to-end -end test which checks, uh, you know, it checks if there is an H1 component containing welcome to your Vue.js app or not, something like this, right? Uh, so uh, what we'll do is we will uh, we'll move on to actually adding some tests and uh, I'm gonna add some Nightwatch tests. Uh, Nightwatch, uh, so I'm not gonna use Cypress, I'm gonna use Nightwatch. Nightwatch is, um, basically a plugin with which you can test uh, you can run tests on chrome and um, and firefox and edge uh, inter uh, microsoft edge all three browsers cypress only works with uh, chrome right now although cypress is, is a very good testing framework uh, if you want to add uh, you know uh, support for uh, view uh, nightwatch then you can just go to um, check out like view cli nightwatch and uh, there's a plugin for that so if you install this uh, plugin, uh, you do view add view CLI plugin. Um, okay, so uh, you do view add uh, view slash e to e nightwatch, uh, in which case uh, you get uh, the nightwatch plugin installed. Um, so just see what tests we will be adding. We um, just go to the test setup. So what we have done, what we're gonna do is uh, we will. Uh, write a unit test uh, which is now specific to my component which is navbar uh, spec test and here i'm going to check uh, so what i'll do is uh, i will use shallow mount from view test utils shallow mount is a way to you know start a component without its parent components present so you actually in my app what we are doing is uh, we are not directly running the navbar component what we're doing is we are going into app.view and app.view contains navbar as you know but when we are testing we want to test navbar as an independent component without uh, considering whether it is part of our app.view or not so shallow mount helps us do that uh, but there's a problem is that inside navbar we have used uh, the store so unless the store is present then i cannot test my navbar because the computed property needs this dot store to be present and if this dot store is not present it will crash so uh, my test is written a bit like this i shallow mount the navbar and i provide the store and the router to it uh, i get the store and the router from my source code and i provide these here right and then i write some tests so i'm writing the first test is that i am um, so i'm using the view test util uh, api which you can read more about here uh, view test utils if you search you'll get um, you know the view test utils uh, readme page so there is a concept of a wrapper so when you uh, when you do a shallow mount you get a wrapper object and inside a wrapper if you do find all so you do find all with a particular selector you get a wrapper array okay so I'm doing is nav items uh, I'm doing wrapper dot find all all the nav items so my navbar is supposed to have three nav items uh, in the beginning 
because when a user logs in the initial state uh, what it's supposed to be like as uh, you know is uh, this thing um, just runs project uh. okay so here's what I want to check I want to check that when my app starts the navbar component by default contains three uh, nav items as you can see these ones right and the second thing i want to check is that if i log in as a user and i have created a user uh call with the email a at the red cb.lk and a at cb.lk that's the password so if i sign in and i pass a at cb.lk and a at cb.lk and just sign in so in that case uh the navbar the last item should contain a cblk okay so if I dispatch this action inside the store, which means that inside my Vuex store, the user actually logs in. Uh, in that case, if I find the last nav item and I find the text inside that, and I should see that the text is ACVLK, okay? So of course, this test depends on the API to work correctly. Uh, this test cannot work if internet is not present. So uh, technically, it's not really an ideal unit test. Unit test should only like, uh, you know, depend only on your source code, not depend on API. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna run these two tests. So how do I run our unit test is using this command. Uh, yarn uh, run test colon unit, and that will run my unit tests. And when it runs the unit test, we get uh, like test suit one passed and uh, two tests passed. So these are both my tests. Should show login register options initially. That's passed. Should show username after login. Um, that's passed as well. Okay. Um, now when you're running a test, you would want to see code coverage as well. Is like how many lines of your code were covered by these tests. So if you want like code coverage to be working. You should uh, go to you know your uh, just config or js and you can add a line uh, called uh, uh, collect coverage to true so if you set your collect coverage to true then it is going to uh, collect all the coverage reports uh, right um, and like the coverage reports they look like um, of course they look like you know just go to um, so coverage reports would look like this that in my components navbar.view there is one line only uh, this dot store so there's the only executable JavaScript line that is covered uh, if I look at my store inside my store my API all of the lines are covered uh, and inside index uh, this line is covered uh, in my modules users.js not everything is covered we have only checked the login user functionality we haven't checked the get user functionality and even inside the login user functionality uh, an error has not happened so these two lines you know uh, were never checked because uh, there was not there was not an error but if like your internet is not connected or something then you would see that these lines uh, would actually get executed so you can get your coverage reports uh, if you set uh, you know uh, collect coverage to true in your just config um, so that's how you do your unit tests okay um, next is your end-to-end -end tests uh, so end-to-end -end tests uh, you know we would want our end-to-end uh, -end tests to basically check what the end user functionality looks like now in your unit tests we are checking how Vue.js components work so we are uh, you know checking the building blocks we're checking how the component works we're checking how the store works but when we're talking of end-to-end -end tests then we check basically what the user is finally going to look at and the user does not think in terms of Vue.js or angular or react the user gets html elements and the user can click on those elements you know so we're just gonna read certain elements from the dom and we're gonna see if the text or the color or the style or the class and all of those things are matching or not so I've written like a end-to-end -end test. Uh, so there's an end-to-end -end test, which uh, is it. Uh, so your end-to-end -end tests in Nightwatch are defined like this. You export a function. Uh, each function, uh, the name of each function is the name of the test. Each function gets the browser object. 
Okay, so inside the browser object, when you run the dot URL uh, function, it uh, opens the URL at uh, it opens the browser at a particular URL. So uh, if you're opening it at view dev server URL, this is the default uh, environment variable that gives you the dev server. So uh, I think using this is better than writing your own string HTTPS local or something like that because this URL will always track the current URL on which your app is open. Uh, so because it's a front-end app, it will take some time for this app to load actually, okay? So as soon as you navigate to the URL, you are not gonna get the HTML DOM in front of you immediately because the HTTP request and getting the page to load might take some time. So we call wait for element visible. We want the app element to be visible and we are ready to wait for five seconds. So we're gonna wait for 5,000 milliseconds, wait for the app element to be visible. Then we run our asserts, okay? So there are a lot of asserts that exist inside Nightwatch already. Now if you go to uh, nightwatch.js.org, uh, you will find um, the uh, documentation and if you go to the get, getting started page and then how to get started with Nightwatch. If you go to the a a a API reference, there are a lot of assert commands you can like check if a particular uh, element contains a particular attribute or not, attribute equals, contains text, CSS class present, so on. Like there are a whole bunch of them. You can use any one of them to check certain things inside your properties. Um, what else is that uh, we can add custom assertions if I want to. So sometimes we might want to add an assertion that does not exist. So I want to make sure that I have got nine, five navbar items on my screen when I open the page, because like if you see uh, the home page, uh, so uh, you know, uh, let me just uh, open, run the app again. So when the app opens for the first time, what I'm supposed to get is something like this. I'm supposed to get, uh, you know, home, sign in, sign up, these three things. And apart from that, uh, we are also getting these uh, your feed and global feed. These are also nav items. Okay, so we got like one, two, three, four, five. So we are supposed to find five nav items on my page when the page opens. So I have a test uh, element present. Uh, there should be an element called banner present. Uh, so banner, that's my banner class out there. And um, I should have a H1 element which says conduit which is of course uh, this element down here h1 element contains conduit and i need to check if there are five nav items so i've created my custom assertion called element count which basically does is it uh, does query selector all on the selector finds out the length matches the value of the length to count okay so you can add your own custom assertions you can look up uh, the uh, custom assertions page on Nightwatch to get an idea of how to create custom assertions. Okay. And uh, so there we go. We are running three tests that uh, we want uh, the banner element to be present. We want uh, an H1 element to be conduit and we want five nav items. So now let's take a look at how the end to end tests get run. So I run yarn test um, or yarn technically yarn one test E to E. And when I run an end to end test in that case, uh, you know, you'll see that first it uh, starts the app on the development server and uh, then it starts the browser, okay? And the browser loads and the browser uh, runs all of these tests. So these tests actually open a standalone browser and inside that browser it runs all the tests, gives you the results. Of course, when you run end-to-end -end tests, then it's not possible to get code coverage because the tests are run like a black box. The tests are run externally, okay? So when you're running the test, we don't have access to the Vue.js object, the view instance or anything like that. When you're running the test, we are uh, simply looking at how the browser is behaving. So we cannot know which lines of my code were executed when this test was running. We, uh, can, we can only just make sure that these tests have run and all of my uh, you know, expected properties uh, have been uh, fulfilled, okay? 
so I think that's it so you got your uh, basic testing setup up and running now every time we add a new component every time we add a new functionality we will just add tests for that along with it so all of our app entire functionality of the app is always tested every time I add a new feature I have the mental satisfaction the peace of mind that my app my project is completely running because my tests are working in order okay so if you're working on a big project tests are really important you should add tests right from the beginning of your project so that gives you an idea of how to run unit tests and end-to-end -end tests next video we're going to see how to add more functionality like fetching all the articles and all of that stuff okay um thank you for watching this hope you had a good idea of how to add tests into your vue.js project